Now, let us try to locate the centroid for different geometrical figures. To derive an expression for centroid of a triangle, so this is a triangle with its base B and its height B H. Let this triangle be named as A B C. Okay. Let us consider a triangle of base B and height H. Now, to locate or to derive the center of this triangle, we shall consider a small elemental area as we did in the previous derivation of centroid. That is, let us consider a very small element inside this triangle. Okay. So, let this be the small elemental area of width B dash and depth dy and let that be located at a distance of small y from the base of the triangle. So, what I have done? I have considered a rectangular element, a smaller element which is located at a distance of small y from the base of the triangle. So, what we can do is we can write let us consider a triangle A B C of base B and height H. Let us consider a small element D Y of base B dash at a distance of y from the base ok. So, let us consider a triangle ABC of base B and height H whose area is obviously given by capital A. So, you can write area capital A. Now, what about the area of this smaller element? Since it is very small, we can consider this element to be of rectangular shape. So, therefore, the area of the smaller element is given by B dash into dy. You can observe this here, but what about B dash? Let me name this as equation 1, but from figure if you observe the similarities between the dimensions, we can write let me name this as B dash and C dash. If you observe from the figure, we can easily say there are two triangles and they are similar. So, from figure triangle A B C and triangle A B dash C dash are similar. So, that means I can take this width equal to 
h minus y, the total is height and this is y, h minus y. So, h minus y divided by h, h minus y by h is equal to b dash by b, okay. So, I want b dash from this equation that I can write as b dash is equal to b into h minus y divided by h. Now, we have the value of b dash. So, substitute b dash in equation 1. So, therefore, equation 1 becomes b into h minus y divided by h into dy. Now, if I take moment of the area for smaller element, I can write it as moment of the smaller area with respect to base is given by area of the smaller element into its centroidal distance. So, area of that is nothing but b into h minus y by h into dy. into y is the centroidal distance of that particular elemental area. So, this shall be equation number 2, okay. Now, Now, that will be equal to b into h minus y by h into y dy or if I multiply y inside, I get b by h into h, my h y minus y square into dy. Now, moment of the area of the entire triangle is given by that is nothing but applying the limits of 0 to h entire triangle. If I consider this point, the limit of this h is 0 because it is a starting point 0 to the maximum point is h. That is apply 0 to h b by h into h y minus y square dy. Let me take b by h outside and write the integral 0 to h, h y minus y square into d y or this will be equal to b by h integral of 0 to h. Let me multiply y inside that will give us h y into d y minus y square into d y. Now, on integrating the terms we get b by h so into h y dy is nothing but y square by 2 and the limits 0 to h minus y cube by 3 limits 0 to h that can be written as b by h into h square by 2 minus h cube by 3. Now, if you observe h into h square is nothing but h cube that is b by h into h cube by 2 minus h cube by 3. Next. on taking the LCM, we get 
एच क्यूब बाई टू इंटू सिक्स माइनस एच क्यूब बाई थ्री इंटू सिक्स वी गेट दिस इक्वल टू बी बाई एच इंटू सो दिस इज एच क्यूब एच या थ्री एच क्यूब माइनस टू एच क्यूब इज एच क्यूब सो एच एंड एच क्यूब इज square remains so it is b h square by 6 okay so this is b h square by 6 let g be the center of the triangle and y bar be the center of the distance from the base and moment of the area of the triangle is given by a into y bar wherein area of the triangle is given by half into base into height into this y bar so this is nothing but b it is b h square by 6 from equation 3 it is b h square by 6 and now cancelling h and h square h by 3 So y bar is equal to h by 3. So now we shall locate the centroid of the triangle at a distance of y bar from the base of the triangle. So this will be its. centroidal axis okay similarly for a right angle triangle you can derive the same expressions for the centroid following the same steps but the thing is you need to write the figure consisting of only the right angle triangle and consider the small elemental area along the horizontal direction at a distance of small y from the base then calculate its moment of the area of that particular strip or the small elemental area and then consider the entire triangle apply the limits integrate it will be getting an expression and then calculate the moment of the area of the entire triangle half into base into height uh, into its y bar distance then equate those two equations consisting of the moments that is the moment of the larger triangle and the moment of the smaller element considering the entire triangle will give you the expressions for y bar and also for x bar okay so the centroidal values for a right angle triangle will be as x bar is equal to base by 3 and y bar is equal to h by 3 y bar remains same but for x bar it will be base by 3 okay so let me just give you hint on how to proceed with the right angle triangles expression so if i consider a right angle triangle a b c the base will be small b and this will be small h and we need to consider a smaller elemental area in x direction at a distance of small y and this shall be b dash and the thickness of this will be dy and on performing the same steps as we did in the regular triangle we will be ending up with the expression for y bar as h by 3 similarly if you consider this element along the vertical direction then we can easily get an expression for x bar will be equal to b by 3 so this you can try so apply the same steps into the right angle triangle provide the elemental area along horizontal direction to derive y bar and uh, same thing assume this elemental area to be in vertical direction at a distance of small x from the apex and then you will be getting the expression for x bar as well i hope this is clear and we shall
continue now to the next derivation of rectangle. To derive an expression for centroid of a rectangle. Let me consider a rectangle whose length is L and base or the sorry and its breadth be B. Okay, so this is the rectangle. Now to derive the expression for centroid of this rectangle, we shall consider a small elemental area as we did in the previous step. Whose depth is equal to dy and the width is equal to length L. It remains same, no changes. Okay. So, this is the length and this is the breadth of the rectangle. This is at a distance of small y from the base of this rectangle. Okay. So, it is now as shown in figure. Okay. So, the steps to be written are let L be the length of the rectangle, B be the breadth of the rectangle and let us consider a small elemental area whose depth is dy and is located at a distance of small y from the base of the rectangle. Okay. Then we shall calculate the moment of the area of this particular strip or the elemental area and then let us consider the entire rectangle area and derive the expression for corresponding x bar or y bar. Now, let us derive the expression for a centroid of a rectangle. So, writing the same sentences that is let L be the length of the rectangle and B be the width of the rectangle and let, let us consider a small elemental area whose width is equal to the length of the rectangle and width or the depth is equal to dy as shown in figure and is located at a distance of small y from the base of the rectangle. Now, area of small element is equal to L into dy. Now, if I write the moment of the smaller area or small elemental area, we can write it as L into dy into its centroidal distance y as shown in figure. So, this will be nothing but L into y dy equation number 1. Now, let us consider the entire rectangle with respect to this small area that is moment of the small area with respect to moment of the small area with respect to x axis is given by L y dy and apply the limits as 0 to b and so 0 to b is the limits we can apply for y. So, after integrating we get L if I take it outside it will be y square by 2 0 to h or this is equal to L into h square by 2 equation number 2. Now, let me consider moment of the total area of the rectangle which is given by A into its y bar where we need to write few sentences such as let capital G be the centroid of the rectangle and let y bar be the centroidal distance of this rectangle with respect to x axis that is equal to L into B 
into y bar and let this equation be 3. Now, if you observe the left hand side of equations 2 and 3, we can easily say that it is equal. So, from equations 2 and 3, we can equate it that becomes L h square by 2 is equal to L into b into y bar. So, L and L gets cancelled, sorry, it is 0 to b. it is b l b square b square so b square and b gets cancelled that is left out with y bar is equal to b by 2 similarly if you consider this small element along the vertical direction and repeat the steps but this y will become now x here and continue with the same steps, you are going to get the x bar value is equal to L by 2. Okay. So, x bar is equal to L by 2 and y bar is equal to V by 2. This is the centroidal values of a rectangle. So, after we derive the y bar, I shall locate it as G and this shall be its centroidal axis. So, this axis can be drawn after calculating x bar and y bar that is after deriving and this shall be g of x bar comma y bar. Okay. So, this is nothing but x bar and this is nothing but y bar. Okay. I hope you have understood this. Now, let us move on to the next geometrical figure that is a semicircle. So, let us draw a semicircle with its radius equals to capital R. Now, this is the semicircle of radius R. So, as we did in the previous cases, again here we need to consider a smaller element, but since it is having the circular path we shall not consider the elemental area as we did in the previous case. Okay. So, we have to consider a smaller element at a distance of small r from the origin. So, let us consider a smaller element at a distance of small r from the origin. So, that thickness of the smaller element b dr okay and let this be located at an angle theta and let this angle or the smaller element angle b d theta and if you observe this part since it is a smaller element, it looks like a rectangle. We can consider that part as a rectangle also. Okay. So, now we can write the same steps. Let R capital R be the radius of the semicircle and let us consider a smaller element at a radial distance of small r from the origin and let the depth of the smaller element be dr and let the angle of inclination be theta and the smaller elemental area angle be d theta. So, if you write all these things, next step is we can easily derive the centroid. For that we need moment of the smaller elemental area and with respect to that we need to calculate the moment of area by considering the semicircle and then 
we should calculate the moment of the entire area or the total area of the semicircle, then equate those two equations to derive the expression for the centroid. And let capital G be the centroid of the semicircle at a distance of y bar from the base AC. Okay, you have to write all those points. I am just going to derive the equation. Now, the area of smaller element is equal to, so this area of the smaller element is given by R d r into d theta. Okay, so R and this dr you have to add both you only you can take the total width as r dr into d theta. Since we are considering it to be a rectangle, since it is a very small element, we can consider this as a rectangle and write the area as shown. Now, moment of small elemental area is given by area into its perpendicular distance that is nothing but r into dr into d theta into what about its perpendicular distance with respect to base. So, this is its perpendicular distance. So, if this is theta calculate its y component it is nothing but y equals to r sin theta that is our vertical height. So, for those who are wondering how I wrote this y is equal to r sin theta, you have to go back to the resolution of forces system. Okay. So, I have resolved that r with respect to its vertical component and I have written it as r sin theta. Okay. So, that is nothing but r square sin theta into d theta dr or on rearranging we can write r square dr into sin theta d theta. This is after rearranging the terms and let this be equation number 1. Now, if I consider the moment of the whole area with respect to the its x axis I can write this equal to see you here we are involving with the measurements of angles as well as the distance where r is in distance and theta is the angle. So, r what is the limit that you can apply for r? So, from this point it is 0 and at last point it is capital R. Similarly, what is the maximum angle you can measure? So, from this point to this point it is 0 degree. So, it is 0 to pi that is integral of 0 to r r square dr into integral of 0 to pi sin theta d theta. Now, integrating r square with respect to r that is nothing but r cube by 3 into uh, limits 0 to r into what is the integration of sin theta? It is minus cos theta. So, the limit is 0 to pi. The limits from this point to this point that is you can measure 0 degree until this point is 180 degree that is nothing but pi 0 to pi. For a semicircle, you can measure the angles from 0 to 180 degree and hence the limits 0 to pi that is integration of sin theta is minus cos theta and the limits are 0 to pi. Now, if you substitute this capital R cube by 3 into, so the upper limit is minus cos pi minus of minus cos pi minus of minus plus cos 0 which is nothing but r cube by 3 into minus cos pi that is minus into minus 1 is plus 1 and cos 0 is also 1 which is nothing but 2 r cube by 3 equation number 2. 
okay this is one equation 2 now let us write the moment of the entire area which is given by area into its y bar wherein the area of this semicircle is given by pi r square by 2 and uh, let g be the centroid of the semicircle located at a distance of y bar from the base and y uh, a is given by pi r square by 2 which is equal to pi into r square by 2 into y bar. Let this be equation number 3. So now after we compare equations 2 and 3 and uh, look into the left hand side of those equations we get LHS of 2 and LHS of 3 is equal to same that is moment. So easily we can equate equations 2 and 3 ok. So on equating the equations from equations 2 and 3 we get 2 r cube by 3 is equal to pi r square by 2 into y bar. So, r square and r cube gets cancelled and after cross multiplying we get y bar is equal to 4 r by 3 pi. So, this is the value of y bar. So, let me locate. So, since it is symmetrical about y y axis we do not have any x component. So, this be the g of this semicircle and this is its centroid y bar ok. So, that expression is given by given by y bar is equal to 4 r by 3 pi. So, whenever you are dealing with the uh, expressions involving semicircle y bar should be equal to 4 r by 3 pi. But what if the orientation of semicircle is changed to different direction? then you have to change the y component accordingly. If this semicircle is oriented by 90 degrees, its y bar, y bar will be equal to x bar. That is, if this is the orientation, so this will be now x bar, which is equal to 4 r by 3 pi. Similarly, if it is changed to the other direction, it will be y bar. If it is written opposite to it, again it will be x bar only. Please be careful while writing the central components of a semicircle. I hope it is clear. And now let us move on to the last derivation of the geometrical figure which is nothing but the quadrant. So, for a quadrant everything remains same, but it is just the half of semicircle. See that is why I have retained the entire steps of the uh, previous derivation and this is our semicircle half that is quadrant of a circle. Okay. So, now if you observe this clearly, we have written almost or retained the same figure, but I have erased only the half of the semicircle part. Now, the derivation uh, goes like this, the initial steps remains the same, let the smaller element be located at a radial distance of r from origin o, let the thickness of that element be dr and let that be located at an angle of theta with respect to horizontal axis or x axis and then the radius of the quadrant of a circle be capital R. Let me write the radius here also. This is radius R. Now, for this case if you observe it is not symmetrical about any axis. So, that means you will be having x bar and y bar also. In this prob case you should write x bar and y bar ok. So, now the initial steps as we did in the case of semicircle goes like this area of the small element r dr d theta, moment of the small elemental area which is r dr d theta into r sin theta that is equal to r square dr into sin theta d theta equation number 1. 
but what changes is it starts changing from this step that is what is the measurement which you can measure from origin to the last point that is radius capital R. So, this limits remains 0 to R there is no changes here, but what about the angle that you can measure here. So, from origin O to this point it is 0 degree and from origin O to point A is 90 degrees that is the only change that we need to incorporate here that is this is nothing but pi by 2 the limits is change to 0 to pi by 2. Similarly, here it should be cos pi by 2 minus cos 0. So, what is cos pi by 2? Cos pi by 2 is nothing but cos 90, cos 90 is 0 plus cos 0 is nothing but 1. So, here we need to write it as 0 plus 1 which is r cube by 3 only equation number 2. Now, moment of the area entire area what is the area of quadrant of a circle it is not pi r square by 2 it should be pi r square by 4 that is half of the area of the semicircle pi r square by 4 and you have to write in the same thing in the next equation as well. So, equation 2 is r cube by 3 and equation 3 is pi r square by 4. pi r square by 4 into y bar. So, cancelling r square and r cube you can send this 4 to the numerator on the left hand side. So, y bar will be equal to 4 r by 3 pi. Now, similarly for x bar it will be having the same steps. So, since it is not symmetrical the centroid lies somewhere here that is nothing but g. So, this is the centroidal axis x x and this will be its y bar. Similarly, this will be its x bar and this will be axis y y. So, we can write similarly x bar is equal to 4 r by 3 pi. So, this is how you locate the centroid of a quadrant of a circle. So, for a quadrant of a circle we will be having both x bar and y bar for semicircle we will be having only y bar for rectangle we will be having x bar and y bar for a regular triangle we will be having only y bar but for a right angle triangle we will be having both x bar and y bar values ok. So, if you are clear with these things let me just list out the formulas for the centroid for different plane figures the, so that it will help you out for the next numerical sessions. So, we started with a triangle of base B and height H. So, this is where the G is located. Its x bar is equal to 0 if it is symmetrical and its y bar is H by 3. What if we consider a right angle triangle? So, the centroid lies somewhere here which is capital G base height So, this will be x x this will be y y and this will be its x bar and this will be its y bar. So, that is given by x bar is equal to b by 3 and y bar is equal to h by 3. And next a rectangle 
length and breadth so this will be its x bar this will be its y bar so x bar is equal to l by 2 y bar is equal to b by 2 instead of l you can even write this as h sorry okay next for a semicircle of radius r this is nothing but its y bar so x bar is 0 if you consider this axis and y bar is equal to 4 r by 3 pi similarly for a quadrant of radius r we have this android both x bar and y bar x x y y so for this x bar is equal to 4 r by 3 pi y bar is equal to 4 r by 3 pi ok so these are the centroidal values of the plane figures or plane geometrical figures so using this we can solve the numericals ok so you have to divide your given composite section into known components of this kind whose centroidal values are known to you with the help of this try to measure it with respect to the reference axis or the coordinate axis and then try to locate the center of the given lamina ok so if it is clear now we are left out with the last part that is sign convention sign convention so if this is the origin o what if you measure the values in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant so the sign conventions for x and y in first quadrant is plus and plus the sign convention for the second quadrant for x and y components is minus and plus. The sign convention for the third quadrant to measure the x and y component is minus and minus. And the sign convention for the x and y components in fourth quadrant is plus and minus. What does this mean? So in first quadrant x is positive y is also positive in second quadrant x is negative y is positive in third quadrant x is negative y is also negative in fourth quadrant x is positive but y is negative ok these sign conventions are very much important to take up the numericals